So guys, I'm sitting here with the original Oki from Muskogee. No, I'm just kidding. Mr. Cody Lane, I'm just kidding. He is from Oklahoma, the great state of Oklahoma. Mus Muskogee County? Muskogee County, Oklahoma. Muskogee County. Did some homework on him. And um, he's coming up fast, man. He is coming up very fast in music industry specifically i guess what you consider yourself a country rapper i guess if i had to uh a lot of people here trying to avoid that claim you know what i'm saying but i'm owning it yeah i guess okay. I'm, a, I'm a country dude who's rapping so country dude who's rapping yeah. hey you know and every now and then country dudes go to town so it may not always be country yeah you know but i mean it's uh nevertheless country dude who's rapping i like that all right so one thing i've noticed bro about your music the first time that I saw something on YouTube. I noticed you have a different voice. Um, I just never heard anything like it. Yeah, it's like you—you you, you definitely have a a good flow, a rap presence. But it's like I, I hear a lot of like it's almost like you could break out and be a country singer. Yeah, I got there's a lot of twang in my voice. I, I can I can hear that, and I like that. I think it has to do with the dialect, kind of like exactly where I'm from, because Oklahoma is a place that. If you, it's a, there's a constant debate: Are we Midwestern yeah. or are we Southern? Yeah. Uh, and so we've got a little bit of a Southern draw to the voice, but then you have that Western twang to it too. Yeah. So when I really go to expressing myself and talking, that's just kind of how it comes across. I like it, bro. And, it's um, when, like when, like whenever, like okay, so a lot of South Southern rappers, you can hear the, um, you know, the draw or whatever. You hear the Southern draw, but yours was a little bit different. And so whenever I listened to it, I was just like. I don't know, you know, I, I can't really label that. Yeah. I don't really know that, but I like it. It's, yeah. it's different. That's I'd say that's probably the, other than just the raw lyrical content, that's probably the one thing I got going for me is my voice sounds different. <laughs> no, you man. know what I'm saying? So. You're, good. You're a good writer, too. Um, I, I, I've i I've heard some of your music before you show me, but then you sent me something. I was like, oh, yeah, I've heard this too before. Uh, you, you're getting around on the Internet, man. You got, you got uh, some good numbers lately. I've seen, you got some songs with Simple Man. You got yeah. some songs. Uh, I'm sure you got a lot coming out. Yeah, I've got a, a new a new record called Country Rap Jesus dropping on Christmas Day. Oh yeah, <laughs> I like that. I like that. So uh, so let's plug the new record right now here at the beginning. Then we'll go back and we'll talk about some stuff from the past. Country Rap Jesus, December 25th. December 25th. Okay, yeah. plug in the new album. All right. So y'all yeah, check that out. And um, there's one thing I did notice about your music that it's very honest. And it's very transparent. It's very, hey, this has happened to me in my life. I don't want anybody to experience this. Um, you know, I, I had hard times. This happened, this happened, this happened. This is what I've been through. But now we're going to, um, you know, you're going to pick up from here and talk about positive things. That's the vibe I get. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's very much my testimony of, to wrap it, you know, yeah. wrap it into one like and I feel like a good testimony honest it has to be honest and raw but yeah that's yeah. awesome and we can get into that more we can get into that more uh, I just had a question I'm going to ask you a first question here um, that I had and then we'll go we'll get into the the in, in, the, in depth about your, your testimony I would love to hear it bro um, I've, I've, I'm I'm a Christian myself if that's if that's what you're talking about, right? Yeah. So I mean, I've I've been through, I've been through the ringer. I've seen friends put through the ringer, you know, over that stuff, over over other stuff. And I mean, I I have a testimony as well. And it's really neat, man. It's it's really cool to see somebody come full circle like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. It, it's terrific. Um, so first question I had was, you know, when you were younger, teenager perhaps, or um, Maybe even recently, maybe you wasn't younger, maybe you just got into it. Did you ever have, was there a certain CD or an album or like a certain musician or, or a band or something that you got into and you were like, 
man, I love music. Like that just that just turns me on to music, and it makes me want to do that. I want to do that. Uh, Anything like that, or as far as just like music in general, man, really red dirt music. I've got it on my shirt. Uh, Cross Canadian Ragweed was a band. Um, I've heard of, yeah, I've heard of it. Uh, they they uh, I watched them play live a couple times, and in o- in Oklahoma, you know, red dirt. There's Texas country, and there's red dirt, and it's really kind of like the same sound. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's like a, a it's like a folk genre. Right, yeah. And so I, I really got into that. In fact, I call what I do now Red Dirt Rap a lot of the time. Uh, that's, that's um, awesome. Um, but, them, but I got into Ragweed really heavy, and I liked them. And seeing them play live, I, to me, music wasn't something I ever thought I was going to do until the last few years. Oh, that's cool. So I, and I don't want to ramble on, but yeah, Ragweed, seeing them play live really was, was really an inspiration. And then as far as hip-hop, the Get Rich or Die Trying record was... You know, probably, monumental, yeah. Yeah, probably the greatest yeah. one of all time. For sure. I uh I totally I so whenever I was younger, man, I, I went whatever album came out a lot of times, man, I, I just I like it all, to be honest with you. I played in metal bands, I played in like church teen group bands, I played um you know, rock, you know, metal, country, and then you know, rap. Country rap is kind of, is kind of newer for me, but I realized I was like um, you know, whenever it was, it was kind of new. I mean, there was some, there were some artist names, um, a, a couple of them that came out of the country rap stuff, you know, Colt Ford, uh, and there's some more, uh, people like that, that I, that I remember hearing for the first time. And I was like, I, I think, I think that would be more my alley. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm not really a great, like, I wish I was Yeah, not a great singer. You know what I'm right. saying? Like me neither. And, me neither. uh, so like you like in. You like in that band that's between Red Dirt and Texas country that puts probably a lot of country uh, influences with your voice, like we're yeah. talking with your voice. And then what do you do? You have anything specific that turned you on to rap, or is just, it just her, just seeing the guys like Up Church and the guys, people that look like me from mm-hmm. places from like, from like where I'm from, like the Lax and stuff like that. Yeah, Lax, um, yeah. Shout out and seeing them doing music, uh, I was like, man. I can do that. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I've written my whole life. And so when I seen that going on, I was like, boy, I can, yeah. I can do that. Um, yeah. And really just the whole sub, just subgenre as a whole, seeing everybody, uh, like the lax. Hard Target is one of the... Um, Shout out. You know, uh, that's, he's actually... Uh, I've been able to network with him, and, and he's probably the one that I was the biggest fan of. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I really dug the way he rapped, and he sounded really cool. So shout out Hard Target. Shout out, you know, what's Shout up? out Hard Target. That dude can spit. Yeah, he's a great yeah. rapper. And uh, so... When we, whenever he reached out to me on Instagram, you know, when we started talking, I was like, "Well, this is cool." But yeah, just I was seeing everybody do it, it really was an inspiration. And there's, I think that you're, we're just seeing the beginning of what country rap is gonna be. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's it, it, for people coming out. Now there was people who came out like they didn't really know who, what what it was, but for it actually coming out for what it is being called. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's definitely in its infancy. And so it's gonna be interesting to find out what it grows yeah. into, yeah. how how it goes, and you know, one day there may be a country rap charts, there may be a um, country rap award show. You yeah. know, you never know. Or at some point, I see that happening. Or at some point, hip hop adopting it as a whole, and it just yeah. being another. You know what I'm saying? Just another subgenre of hip hop. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, a lot of the guys, bro. I don't know if you noticed, but like a lot of the guys are like, I mean, old school rappers. Like they are jumping in. Yeah, like like even Boozy. Yeah, I've seen him. Well, I mean, he did a remix with Upchurch. Yeah, but like, I mean, I wouldn't call him a country rapper, but like, he is definitely Southern influence. Oh, dude, yeah. Even Kevin Gates is Southern influence. You know, he's from Louisiana, and um, yeah. And I think it's kind of a. I think you're right. I think a lot of you know maybe not the the rappers from the north. Yeah. But I mean, I think a lot of Southern rappers or Oklahoma Midwest whatever. I think they're going to start like kind of getting this like gumbo of. Rap yeah. and country and so yeah. which it's kind of happening now. Yeah, people are starting to see how it can work. Yeah, makes sense for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and I mean, it's 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 really cool, man. Music is always one of those things that is going to evolve, and it's one of those things that you can't really put inside of a box. Right. Because whenever you do, somebody like the Oliver Anthony guy comes along and does something weird and different, and then somebody else comes along, and uh, then you you see people put beats to it, and then you, that's just it's really cool that. Uh, there's always going to be something original from music. But yeah, that was one of my questions, man, about the influences, um, what your influences was. And, and that's really cool because a lot of people get on here and then they'll name like, uh, 
you know, a lot of typical stuff you hear all the time, but I, I haven't heard that answer yet. Yeah. Like, you red dirt music in the Texas stuff. But yeah, I'm there with you. I, I, I mean, I liked rap. Like, 50 Cent album was, was huge. And, um, you know, when I was young, Eminem. Yeah. Stuff like that. And um, I, I liked it, but then I didn't really... I didn't really get back into it until like the country rolled around, like yeah. country stuff rolled around. Yeah. And whenever I started seeing like people like the early, the early names in country, the lacks, uh, you know, um, Colt Ford and like a bunch of those early names. And then Up Church came along about 2014, and I first saw a song with him 2015, and that for me was like, dude, like I, I, I liked the other stuff, but that made me want to do it. I'm like, I want to do this now. This yeah. is this is cool. This is this is different. You know what I'm saying? Cause like church can wear what he wears he can wear cowboy boots he can wear whatever he wants and just straight up rap like Buster Rhymes if he wants you know what I'm saying like it was it was different you yeah. just don't see that but anyways bro thanks that's a, that's a good answer that's a that's something that's one I haven't heard yet um, I know I know you said that you wanted to talk about your past a little bit laid on the table and everything um, you know, just talk about whatever you want to talk about, and and uh, a yeah. lot. Of, I love I love doing stuff like that on this channel because um, you know Chad Arms has been on the channel. Um, there's a, there's a few people so far. Uh, Jeff Jeff McCool from Moccasin Creek did an interview with him, and he uh, he was talking about and and, Mo and and Jeff is really cool with a uh, um, trailer made. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's 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 one of the he loves Simple Man and they they yeah. actually do a lot of shows together. So Jeff's a great guy. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and so Jeff was talking a lot about his past and stuff, and he had a specific song, bro. That like it was like whenever first time I heard it, man, I got chills. I was like, I haven't really been through that struggle, but whenever I heard it, I was like, somebody's gonna hear this and they're gonna be like, man, I'm close to like destruction. I got to yeah. change. And he said he'll have people message him all. He said he had to do messaging one time. Um, you know, I had I had a gun in my mouth and I was ready to do it and I was ready to get out of this world. He's like, and I heard that song somehow just skip on my Spotify, and he said it was on my Spotify and, and he said I decided to give it one more shot and he said I got clean. He said he had to do message him that. Yeah. And so you coming from and talking to me and showing me a little bit about your past as we've talked over the past week. Is there anything you wanted to talk about? And is there any kind of encouragement you wanted to give? I heard you got into a little trouble a while back, and you don't, we don't have to talk about it or nothing, yeah. but like, yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, it's 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 good talk. Right? Yeah, I'd say, man, I got, a, when I got out, I was a pretty good kid, like, in high school and shit, but then as soon as I got out of high school, um, addictive, addiction and addictive personality kind of took over almost immediately with drinking and partying, and, yeah. but I was functioning up until I ran into the harder drugs at, like, 2000 and, see, 12, 11 or 12. 11 or 12. Yeah. Um... And I started, you know, we've got a real bad meth problem in oh, Oklahoma. Okay. Um, yeah, we do here. Man. Really? You see, we were we were kind of looking around trying to see if we could see the signs of the, of the, of the meth problem. We've seen a few, but we were like, it doesn't seem as bad as where we're at. But, uh, yeah, it's... Certain certain towns. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but go ahead. Yeah. Um, so We're in a good area here. But. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, Give me all your money. No, I'm just it, it just... <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it just... <clears throat> you know, drug addiction consumed me. Yeah. Consuming it up until a point in 2019, I I had to, I have two kids. I have four kids, but my two oldest is the only ones I had at the time. And me and their mom had both fell into addiction and then separated. And she called me and said, I need to bring the kids down. We got to stay with you for a week or two at the house I was living in in Shakota. And I said, okay, fine. You know, I was excited about having my kids. Kicked out, sure. all, the, kicked out all the dope heads because it was a trap house. Mm, yeah. Kicked out everybody. Y'all got to go. Right. They're coming. And the next morning when I woke up and she had left for work and I had my two kids, no food in the refrigerator, no water. Mm. The electric was a day or two from being turned off. Yeah. And not knowing if I had to gas in my car to get down to Walmart to feed my son was the moment I was like, shit. Yeah. You know, I got to get some. I got to straighten up. So. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. Um, thanks uh, for sharing that, man. Um, so I moved to my grandma's not long after that. And I'm still not a perfect person. Don't get me wrong. I'm used to me. I smoke sure. weed and I will every day till the day I die. I like to eat mushrooms and things like that. But, um, yeah, yeah that, that was the low point for me. So that's, I say all that to say, my music it definitely um, is, is, to touch, is to reach out and people to hear it 
and then decide to make a change. And I've been blessed to, I receive messages like that from time to time. Cody, your music means this to me. And it's just been an amazing journey for the first year and a half, you know what I'm saying? Um, to know that I've already changed some lives. Yeah. And I'm just yeah. excited about the ability to do it in the future. That's great, bro. That's great. Move this back just a little bit. Damn. That's awesome, man. Uh, man, you almost got me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> you almost got me right like, there. Uh, don't do it, Cody. <laughs> you almost got me right there. No, I mean that's uh, that's something that that's real. That's that's real, and that's something that um, I appreciate you for sharing. First of all, second of all, man, I, I uh, it's hard to see. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to see. I've had unless unless it's somebody close to you. It's like it's not as easy to be affected by. It. I've had friends in high school who who, uh, who I was friends with, great great people, talented. Um, five years later, lost their kids, lost their whole life mm. in jail, and, and they would do anything for a fix, you know. And it's 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 and I guess that's the way I relate. But I mean, it's it's really hard to see that, and and it means the world to I'm sure your family, and it means the world to me that you're sharing it on my channel. I <laughs> appreciate it because it's not easy, bro. No, it's not easy, and. Um, but you know what, dude? If it helps somebody, if it saves a life, yeah. Um, I guess you really care about your kids uh, to oh, yeah. sit there, and, and that was almost like your your realization point, like yeah, just that moment, like right. it just. Well, I that was on like a Wednesday or a Thursday, and by that weekend, I had moved out of that house, called my grandma, hey, I got to get things together, and moved into her house. I mean, it, I took action, um, and then not long after moving back in my grandma's house, I was able to meet. And she's off camera, so I guess that media training said I should. Does she want to say hey? No, she doesn't want to <laughs> say hey. But I was able to. I was able to meet my wife. Put her in the interview. <laughs> who had lived right down the road from me my entire life, and I didn't know. And um, well, that's great. Anyway, and so she does a great job. Keep me straight. Yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah, she got me on the leash. She'll go <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on. Yeah, that's good, man. And to be honest with you, bro, when you're younger, like when it, whenever I was young, like I never got into too much. I was a pretty good kid, but like. You have a tendency, like I had a tendency to get to where I was just like, I would do wild stuff. Like I had a tendency, I would, I would do wild stuff, stuff I didn't think I would do. Yeah. And then, you know, you get with somebody like, just like my wife, my wife's the same way. We got together a little later. I was like 24, 25. But like that early, that early 20s time period for me, bro, was like, you know, I, I, I could see where I would, I could go down this road or whatever and I can yeah. see like my tendencies but then she pulled me back dude like yeah. she God, she gave me something to do right for you know what I'm saying besides I mean I've been a Christian my whole life but like a lot of times you just put God in this box oh yeah. God, God's here you know Jesus is here I ain't worried about it don't worry about it you know I got plenty of time I'm 21 years old then guess what you could OD like that you never know yeah. but like she gave me something concrete that kept me straight and made me want to stay straight for you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I, I never, you know, I haven't really done more than ever yeah. smoked a couple joints, you know what I I'm think, saying? I think that's how marriage is supposed to work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think biblically it actually reflects that that's how it's a marriage, you know. Yeah. yeah. So. yeah. And it says that, uh, you know, uh, a man's supposed to lay down his life for his woman and um, you're supposed to protect her, you're supposed to care for her. And, you know what I'm saying? It gives you something uh, yeah. Now you have kids too, but it gives you something to be a man for. Yeah, you know what yep. I'm saying. And I mean, um, thanks for sharing it, though, man. First of all, I, I know I, I know it's probably not easy to share that, but man, on my channel, bro, I haven't had one person. There's one. There's one time I went live. Um, it was like after the Upchurch thing, and like I was sitting there talking, and I was like, I sound selfish right now. Me, me, me. And I was like, you know what? Let me hear y'all's stories. So I had a lot of people live, man. And I was like, has anybody ever had an addiction problem? Let's talk about it. Let's celebrate your recovery and let's let's talk about it. And so there was like, I didn't know this, but I mean, there was like 20, out of like probably 50 people watching me live, there was like 20 or 30 who, you know, yeah, yeah. like I, I've been clean for five years yeah. and I was OD'd on my deathbed. You know, there were so many stories, bro. Yeah, dude. And so that's the stuff that people, man, that's, that's the... That's the stuff that people want to hear. I want and people to hear that. That's why, uh, the, 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 well, addiction's killing our generation. Yeah. The addiction is, I mean, I've lost, hell, I had a live band. I lost my drummer last, less than a year ago, R.I.P. Austin, mm. forward to Fennel. R.I.P. Austin. Mm. Um, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, I've lost so many 
friends, my little cousin Dalton, R.I.P. Little Dalton, so many people mm. to either drugs themselves or like Dalton had stole. I don't want to tell his story on. on no, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, you know, or actions that Something were like uh, that. you know attributed to the addiction. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Stuff yeah. like that, and um, so it, it, yeah, that's that's why I feel like me being brutally honest in songs like Three Days and stuff like that. Yeah. That's why people. That's people. People. The people that have heard it have been drawn to it. Yeah. Because most yeah. people can relate to the struggle, and I feel like that's one thing country lack. Country rap was lacking, and is. Yeah. Is, is yeah. There's not a lot of people talking about a real, other than maybe Jelly, but he's on a different scale. You yeah. Know what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, talking really honestly about the struggle, who have really been there and really been in the trenches. So. Yeah. And that's something that hip hop, is a staple. You know, it's a hate. It's a staple in in regular hip hop. Yeah. But we just kind of didn't have it here, and I thought that would kind of be where I could carve in, and find a niche in the genre yeah yeah so i i agree and when i first heard your music i was like oh we talking about all wild stuff and i kept listening and i listened to like uh one day and like yeah. the beginning the beginning of three days yeah. like i pray nobody ever has it and at the end of it you said like i want to tell this so that yeah. I, you know i'm trying to tell people my story and so i'm like this dude has a story like this this dude has a story yeah this isn't shallow Oh man, they like big butts and trucks and like I mean that that stuff is okay every now and then. You know, it's fun to it's fun to have a party song or whatever now and then. But like, this dude has a story. This is substance. This is um, real life. This is substance. This is a story of ups and downs. Yeah, redemption, uh, addiction, redemption. Um, like you said, you, you know your children. You I mean potentially, you, you know you could have lost them or something if you if you would stay on the path. Yeah, you know, or who knows. And so that's that's the kind of stuff that really moves people. Twenty years from now, is anybody going to remember I like big trucks when I'm yeah. jacked up? I mean, maybe. Yeah. I guess we kind of talked about this already, but another question: and how did that shape all those things that happened? How did that uh, shape your future? Like where you're at now? Like, did it make you more motivated to? Hey, yeah, I, I constantly I say a lot. My struggle, um, my struggle wasn't in vain. You know mm. what I'm saying? Uh, there you go. Yeah. That's why I've sold out to this music thing. Like like I mentioned earlier, music wasn't something that I ever saw. I have friends, some good friends of mine that live here in Nashville, and I grew up with them, and they finished second on The Voice in like 2000, in one of the first few seasons. They're wow. from the Swan Brothers are their names. Okay. okay. And uh, they're here, and they've been writing. So I grew up around them, and they're super talented. And I say that to say I didn't. They were the guys who were going to do music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I never realized it. And then when I got out and realized, heard the country rappers, and had got out of the struggle, and I, it just, I, I'm sold out to I'm 100% committed the next 10 years, nine years now, of my life to this. And that's, and that's I guess, how it's shaped my future. There you go, so, man. That, that's, yeah, I, I think I can, I can see that. Um, it's made you more motivated to get, get yeah. your stuff. I mean, you just drove here from Oklahoma. Yeah. Tennessee, doing an interview with me, doing an interview with, uh, can we talk about it? Chad yeah, Arms? Yeah, okay. Chad so Chad, yeah, shout out to Chad Arms. Awesome, just just a wonderful dude, man, just super nice. Um, I interviewed Chad, and they, they, they're going to have me on the podcast at some point. We've talked about it. But um, going to do an interview with me, Chad Arms, and, and um, that's that's the motivation right there, bro. Yeah. Come all the way from, you know, that's a long drive. Yeah, I, so, believe, yeah, I believe in it. Stay at it. And you'll be, you know, tell where you'll be in a couple of years, bro, or one year, or next month. Yeah, you never know. Really, really, you never know. Uh, as everybody knows, I got a call out of the blue, hang out with one of the biggest ones, one of the biggest independent artists in the world, much yeah. less country rap. You know, up church, shout out church. I'll never not give the dude props. Um, just been super awesome to me, man. And um, that, that happened to me. I gained like I'm almost ten thousand subscribers overnight now. Yeah. You know? I say overnight, but a month or two, three or whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, you never know, man. Where you can be tomorrow, you can be, um, you know, Adam Calhoun. You could be. Uh, yeah, shout out Adam Calhoun. Shout, shout out A Cal. Shout out Adam Calhoun. You told me that you were kind of buddies with him. You knew him. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you could be, um, you know, up there with Adam's numbers. Who knows? I mean, you know, who knows? And that's big. That's a big deal. But um, anyway. So, yeah, man, I, I think, I agree. I think I think whenever somebody takes away one addiction, like it almost like sometimes makes another, you know? Oh, like, yeah, you have to fill that void with something. Fill, yeah, I've always a lot of people that. find like heavy religion and things like that is their way of fixing it. For me, that, that's not it. 
Yeah. Uh, but this music has given me an outlet to yeah. dive off into. So I, I think I think that it's apparent that you're you're going to work. You know, you're going to work hard till you make it, bro. And that's what it takes, man. I mean, look at look at my boy Marcotic, man. He yeah. um, um, filmed a lot of videos for him, and he has done nothing but work super hard in the past year or two. And he came. I remember. Because he lives kind of in this area. I remember when he had just a few subscribers on his channel, man. Couldn't even get 500 views on the video. Yeah. And now he's freaking banging, man. That he's in a great example of, of work, putting feet to it, hands and feet to it, and actually working. Yeah, that dude works. He, I heard you say it on his, but I got to agree. On the podcast? Out, yeah. From yeah. The outside looking in, he's the hardest working artist in the sub genre by far. Yeah, and I mean, Nobody, I don't. Nobody's I don't, out working him. Right. I mean, I don't hang out with everybody. Yeah. But, like, I mean, I can tell you. There ain't a day goes by that he don't wake up and try to make something else happen. Yeah, I, I just see it all the time. I mean, he'll he'll be we we would be at video shoots, um, and I'm not trying to step on anybody else's grind, you know, or hustle. But like I would see, we would be at video shoots, and he would get a call about another video, another day, or like a show or something. He would get a call. He'd be doing business while we were doing the video. I mean, he's just always. He told me one time. He said, and we actually talked yesterday. But he told me one time. He said. I wake up every day and try to figure out a way to either go viral or get a show or get a song or get a video or, or write something. He said, I wake up every day and try to do something like that. Yeah. And, bro, if you do that, yeah, you're just going to keep It's just like that with anything. Up. Yeah, with anything else in life. If, you, if you're working and you're applying yourself, you're going to see success. Like, That's what Church told me. He said, um, he said, bro, he said, hard work will get you almost anything you want to do or get you anywhere you want to be and i was like yeah but what if i suck at it he's like he's like, he's like you'll get there <laughs> but uh I've, I've noticed some religious themes or, or you talking about um you know your testimony or whatever in some of your videos especially the song one day um that you and simple man have and, and it was shot in the church i really enjoyed i really enjoyed the song and um has any have you had any kind of you said your testimony have you had any kind of like um experience with with uh jesus or super something supernatural or spiritual or whatever uh that has helped your recovery or just kind of um did you put your focus in something like that or is it just just you for me as far as i don't mean to cut off no go ahead that's one question for me um there was never a moment I can think about that I can pinpoint that was a super spiritual moment. Um, other than maybe the moment I discussed earlier, because sometimes I think God will reveal himself to you in, in moments like that. Yeah. Where it's not a pretty spiritual. It's not, you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. a, it's a painful yeah, yeah, yeah. experience. And so that might have been one. But um, throughout it all, I prayed every day yeah. to this day. Um, so I think, honestly, I would just, the, the roots I had in faith from before stuck you know what i'm saying and uh so uh, no there wasn't really one experience i haven't shared my story man but it's pretty ch it's pretty chilling i haven't shared my story i'm gonna do it sometime on here so this interview ain't about me but i had something like that happen bro to where i i was just going through a really hard time and like it was like like you said it wasn't i, I didn't necessarily find it in a church that one specific time but like i remember thinking i've got to figure this out yeah i've got to get out of this because it because if i keep going this way i'm just i wasn't happy i had a lot of depression anxiety and stuff like that going on and i just couldn't like i couldn't figure out what was going on with me yeah so i just didn't feel right someone right and so i remember like you said god revealed himself in the way that was like um hey do this and um you know Stop doing stuff. Like There's something that happened for me, and I remember it was a big change, and I'll never, I'll never forget it. And I'll tell, I'll tell the story sometime. But um, a lot of times it takes hard times. Like you don't appreciate recovering yeah. if you've never been through a hard time. Yeah. You know I'm saying you don't have yeah. that story. But, um, but yeah, man, that's um, that, that's that's a good theme in your song. I see, I see the theme a lot in your songs. And I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I, I, I like I like hearing honesty. I like honesty. I, I don't like 
somebody pretending to be what they're not. Um, I don't like somebody, personally, I don't like somebody who's, um, you know, just some kind of, hey, you need to do this, and, and you, um, you know, you, like, they, they don't, they've never really been through anything. Yeah. And so they're saying, hey, Cody, you should have never done that. You should have never done, you know, you, you, then they're just harping on you, but they've never been through anything and had to pull yeah. themselves out of it. Yeah. I think there's, I mean, throughout the Bible, there's a lot of things like that that happen that a lot of people who are suffering, they're the ones that ultimately get to where they need to go. But anyway, that's a whole other discussion for a whole other channel for a whole other uh, <laughs> time. But anyway, I really like Simple Man, bro. I've been, I like, uh, he did, I think he did a remix to the Jelly Roll song. Yeah, he did uh, the open verse challenge. Open verse challenge, yeah, that's yeah. what it was. I did one too, but mine sucked. But anyway, so uh, uh, Simple Man. I really like Simple Man, and I've been, uh, I don't know if I've ever, I've never met him. I don't know if I've ever reached out to him or anything, but I, I watch a lot of his stuff. What's it like working with Simple yeah, Man? Man, it was a surprisingly easy process. That's the first really? time I've ever worked hand in hand with another artist. Um, like I mentioned earlier, Hard Target. Uh -huh. Him and I had actually spoken first, and then um, later, like a few weeks after that, Simple Man reached out to me, and, and we said, let's do, he wanted, he had the idea of let's do one song, and then it just, that went so smooth that it, I said, man, I need content, let's go ahead and do a full EP. And, there you uh, go. Oh, Y'all got one done? Or yeah, we dropped, it? we already dropped the I-40 East, the EP. Oh, sweet. So yeah. all right, check that out, guys. Yeah, I-40 East. It dropped uh, July 1st, I-40 East. I-40 um, East? Yeah, it's streaming everywhere. So, um... We got that done and dropped that. It was a super easy process, man. And him and Bredwin came down and we shot the videos. We shot four videos in two days. Dang. Yeah. Okay. That, that's that's moving right yeah. there. So. Four videos in two days. Bredwin's cool, bro. Bredwin's I, cool. I, I have met him. I met him at Lack Fest. Ooh, he does a lot of stuff with Lack, or he did uh, shoot some videos for him, Dusty Lee, people like that. Um, I met him a couple years ago. Uh, yeah, a couple years ago, this past this past summer, um, he he was really cool, man. Just super chill. You know? Yeah, yeah, really like that guy. Nice ponytail, got a sweet ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had one. But yeah, he's really cool. And uh, you know, I'd seen stuff. I'd seen him put out some songs here, or there, and I'd seen him shoot videos or whatever. And like somebody came up to me and introduced him. I was like, oh, no way, man. Yeah. I said, yeah, I've been watching. You know, I've been watching your stuff. And. Um, I hear you, bro. I hear he has a good price on videos, dude. I don't even know. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know. I mean, I was blessed. I, 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 I ain't even going to discuss our business. I <laughs> no, you're yeah. good. You're good. But I, I heard that he does really good work for, for the price. I'll just say that. Anybody, uh, look, look, look at Breadwin. Look at Breadwin for a video. If, uh, shout out, Breadwin. Trailer made stays working, dude. They all really do. They do. Mm -hmm. They do, yeah. You see your stuff everywhere. Uh, What's his name? What's his, uh, uh, Hard Target? Ryan is, mm -hmm. is that his name, Ryan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been watching him, his stuff for a while. He's really good, man. He, he, something about, like, the dude can rap. You yeah, know, yeah he, and, he's an artist. And I went, dude, I was on YouTube uh, a year or two ago, and I realized he had a song with Fred Durst. I didn't know that. I yeah. Didn't know that but I mean, it was from back in, like, 2012. Yeah. But he had a song with Fred Durst, and I'm like, They've been at it a while. In fact, do you do you should, that? That, those are some people that would be interesting to interview because they actually, originally, if I if I got this right, originally Hard Target was a group, mm. and it was Ryan, Dusty, who's Simple Man, and yeah. Bradwin. Oh, okay. And it was they all three toured under that name, and then now it's they. I I don't know how the story goes. I yeah, know they're all yeah. so super tight. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But uh, that they it, do their own thing. Well, yeah, like they, me no. and my buddy Dustin shout out Dustin Spears. He's uh, on tour right now with the Lax. We, I played for him for a long time, managed, booked, and stuff. And now he's doing his own thing. I'm doing my own thing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, like, that's cool, man. I didn't know that. I had no idea. But I knew that I saw our target with yeah. with Fred Durst. Look it up, man. It's great. I, yeah, I, I'll check it out. Um, I, I blew my mind because I mean, obviously, growing up as a as a kid in the 2000s. Yeah, it's just one of those days. <laughs> <laughs> Break yeah. your face today, and. Uh, but yeah, shout out to those guys, Trailer Mate. Shout out Simple Man. 
Hit me up, bro. Let's do an interview, man. Dude, yeah, the most technical rapper in country rap. Period. <laughs> period. He's really good, Super man. Super technical. Yeah, he's re- he's got a good vo- I, something different about his voice. Too. It's yeah. real, it's real grimy. You know, when he stacks vocals in there. He's really dude's got. I was worried. I was like, man, I because I felt every every type of way about that project. Because my my concern was people are gonna hear these songs and he's out rapping me. He's just flat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's just out rapping, and he does on a bunch of them. But I, you know, I, there's things I do, you know, where I, Different, I yeah. do better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I may tell a story better. Uh, my sounds unique. But yeah, it's a good project. Everybody go check out I 40 East. Yeah, man. Um, you know, I used to be concerned with stuff like that. Like, no, man, I really got to, I really got to, like, rap hard on this next part. But, like, I mean, you know what? You're different for a reason, bro. Yeah. And, I mean, one day it might come where you just are nothing but bar, 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 bar. But you, you do really, you do rap really good, like really fast and stuff. But like, you don't have to be that. In other no. words, like, it, like as long as you're telling your story, yeah. And the song is powerful. I mean, look at Jelly Roll "Save Me." Yeah, it's a singing song. You know what I'm saying? So Dude, like, I'll never forget the first time I heard that. Yeah. I thought uh, this. I, well, I knew. I thought this is it. Mm. He, he's gone. He's gonna make it. He, this is a number one song. Yeah. You know what I'm saying like, it was crazy. perfect timing. Yeah. Perfect. Um, I mean, COVID was just raging. And, uh, you know, it was during a lot of people, they were losing their loved ones to COVID. I remember my my cousin, she was a nurse, and she was like, I see people dying all the time. And she's like, that was my song. That was a song that I kind of just released to, you know. Yeah. And that was song, that song was a lot for a lot of people. Yeah. But, like, you know, I guess the point is Jelly's been a rapper, like a, like a streets rapper. I, I know that maybe record labels don't want you to know that. But Jelly Roll's yeah. been like a streets rapper for, I mean, he lived in Antioch. He lived close to here, Nashville. And he's been a streets rapper for a long time, and then all of a sudden he puts out this song that has no bars, and it's singing, which is something, at the time, he didn't do a lot. Yeah. A little bit, but he's more of a rapper. And it just shows you that you don't have to be as fast as Simple Man yeah. on every song. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you have a song that means something to somebody, bro, it could be everything, you know? Um, but, but anyways... Um, I'm gonna have to check it out, bro. I haven't checked it out yet. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm gonna have to check it out for sure. That's that's the song. One day is off of. Off of oh, okay, yeah. okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to check that out. And uh, you got the visuals too, man. Who shoots you? Uh, shout out uh, Wallace Productions, Austin Wallace. Austin Wallace. Okay. Now, speaking of expensive videos, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> shout out Austin. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well. And they're they're good though. He does an awesome job. Yeah, I, yeah, I can't complain. They're good. Um, but yeah, I was watching them. I was like, I'm digging this video. Like, there's there's almost all of them are really good. And um, I remember thinking that too. There's a lot of people that don't come out of the gate like that. Like they they come out of the gate with like they did it on their cell phone or yeah, something. Yeah, you know, looking shit. Yeah, part of my language. But yeah, that's that's one yeah. thing I said from the beginning, man. I I told Ruby. Cause since since her and I've been together, I've been like, I'm gonna be a rapper. I'm gonna be a rapper. You know, what I'm saying <laughs> I've known it. But I, and then when I started, when I wrote Muskogee County's finest and pay you back, I was like, all right, these two are worth the world hearing. And um, I told her from the beginning, I'm not gonna do anything that looks cheap. Yeah, nothing. I'm gonna look like a professional from the gate. I do not want to look cheap, sound cheap, none of that. So. You're smarter than a lot of them, bro. Because I mean, a lot of them. Don't do, I mean, including me. <laughs> I shoot my own videos and sometimes they turn out great and sometimes but you do, I mean you do a good job yeah well thanks I, I try to but there is some times where, where my you know my buddy Marcotic or whatever they'll be like nah bro you need to get that mix by a pro or you need to get that song you know you need, you need to do this and he's right and he's giving me like friendship criticism you know what I'm saying yeah because that's what you want you want somebody to tell you the truth and um, but I mean I'm, I'm the kind of person where I'm hard headed you know and I'm like Nah, man, I don't need to spend that two hundred bucks. But guess what? If that two hundred bucks is a difference in thirty thousand views, and yeah. five views or five hundred yeah. views, that's what we should do, man. But yeah, kudos to you for having like good quality stuff off the top. I, I noticed that. It's the first thing I noticed. And uh, the way you carry yourself in the videos, you know, it's almost like you've been doing it for ten, like how long have you been doing it? Uh, like a year and a half. A year and a half. It's almost. It's like you've been doing it for a lot longer than that. Thank so, you. But um, let's see here. Is there is there any specific artist that you haven't worked with, talked to, um, that you like specifically? Like, like obviously we want to we want to collab with the big boys, but is there anybody specifically that you haven't worked with that you 
watch a lot of their stuff, and you're like, man, I would really like to. I'm still wanting to get one with Hard Target. Hard Target? Yeah, me hard and Target. We've actually, you know, there's surely one of those coming soon. Hard uh, Target? We're yeah. going to have to tag you in this video, bro. Yeah. Don't make me tag you. Yeah. <laughs> him and him, Ryan, we've discussed it. Um, he's just waiting on me to send him something. So, cool. Hard cool. Target, Marcotic. Marcotic, uh, come um, on, bro. Yeah. I think that, uh, like, me and Marcotic, there's, see, there's, there's happens. I feel like, maybe I'm wrong, there's kind of a wave of new. Yeah, country rappers. At least maybe I just seeing that because I feel it like is. I'm one of them. It is. We're kind of we're trying to push in, and Marcotta community need to link. Uh, I think I think that you and him would be a good fit. I really y'all have like a similar like vibe. Yeah, you know I think. Uh, and I'm gonna do that, man. Marcotic, we're gonna come over to your house after this, bro. <laughs> we're gonna show up, man. No, I think he's actually doing some of this kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I told him I said Cody's gonna be. I said you want. want I said we're gonna come over. I said, I'm going to holler at you. We're going to come over. He said, nah. He said, he has to do some of his kids yeah, or something, yeah. I think. But we need to get a song in for real. Yeah, I, I think so. I think y'all have, have a good vibe together. Because Marcotic is a lot of that old school flavor. Like a lot of that, um, he keeps a lot of the original hip hop stuff. Because he was original hip hop. But then, I mean, he is a dude from the country. He lives out here. So yeah. he, he kind of he kind of trickles that in. Yeah, he, you know he kind of owns it with the mobile home rich and all that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he's. I mean, he's got his own brand. That's yeah. for that's for darn sure, man. But um, we're gonna hook that up, bro. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay on. I'm gonna stay on. We're gonna make him go out to Oklahoma too. Well, you ain't coming back out here. We ain't got to come back out here. We're gonna give him. A, we're gonna give him a show in Oklahoma, and then he's gonna he's gonna stop by. Yeah, that's what I, I talked to him about. I, I, I've talked to him about doing one of his little mobile home rich parties out there or whatever. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. Man, I, I filmed. There was one. He did a few of them. He's done a few of them in like bars and stuff. But I filmed one last year. It was at the blue. It was at Blue Holler. Yeah, I remember. That. And it was like good. Like I mean, it was like his first mobile home. He threw his own bash, you know. And um, and I went out there and I was like, you know, you know, you're Marcotic. He's got a name, but like it's like hard to get people out. You know what it's I'm the hardest thing to do in music. Yeah, it's hard Selling to get. Selling tickets is the hardest thing. And there, we showed up and it was like a lot of people there, and I was like, bro, like. If you yeah. can do this, you're doing it. Yeah. I said, because it's hard to do this. Yeah. Like, I mean, and there's people with, you know, a million or two, three or four million views on the song, more than what he would have. Yeah. And they can't do it. Yeah. Just selling tickets is the hardest thing. That's one Adam to Adam Calhoun told me that, and it, yeah. it rings true. Selling tickets is the hardest thing to do in music. It is, man. It, I mean, it, it, there's a lot of people with big names now are having trouble doing it. Um, but, I mean, it's just... Um, I don't know if COVID changed that or not, but like, Marcotic's really good at engaging people. Yeah. Um, as far as like, he, he goes, he travels a lot. Always doing something. So I guess he's really good at that. But anyways, um, where do you see yourself um, with or without music um, in five years? Or, your, you know, where you see yourself in your music in five years? I want if you feel like you're going to keep doing it. I'm yeah, sure you are. Yeah, I, I've come... Um, the vision, yeah, the vision is, yeah. is big. The nice. vision is fifteen thousand seat stadiums. Ooh, uh, and I, I, I've heard okay. that you're supposed to protect your dreams by you know not necessarily always sharing all the cards. But yeah, I've seen that. Um, yeah, but mainly, what I want people to say is whatever your definition of a good man is. I just want to be that. I want, you know, what I'm saying I just want to live up to that. Um, Keep making good music, and we'll everything else will, will take care of itself. Yeah, it will. So that's awesome, bro. Um, a lot of times, the good man and the vision go hand in hand. Right. A lot of times, if you are that, you will get help along the way. You'll get people naturally attracted to you. You know what I'm saying? Who want to be around you? Um, that's what Chad Arms told me. Like Chad Arms told me, he's like. Yeah, man, sometimes it seems slow or whatever, he said, but just keep being a, being a good dude and just, he's like, do good business. Don't get on the internet and just talk crap to people or yeah. whatever. And he said, yeah, just keep being a good dude. And like he said, all this stuff is going to fall into place. Um, and look at him, you know what I'm saying? He just, yeah. tried, he just dropped a song with Adam, Adam Calhoun. Justin and Lil White. Yeah, Justin Time and Lil White on one song. That's a fuck. Yeah, that's a that's nuts, man. That's like a mega, mega, mega. Yeah, it's an all star. Yeah, team. that's 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 crazy. So um, that's the Space Jam of songs. That's the monster. <laughs> that's the monster. The monster. Monsters of songs. But yeah, so like you know, and, and I think hard work, 
being a good dude. And you got a hell of a story. That's yeah. a whole other thing right there. Yeah. And then having a vision, working hard toward it, those that's the perfect storm, man. And so I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see where you go, man. I love. I keep up with people I interview. Yeah. And so we we might do a song together, bro. Hell yeah. I, I did one with Big Murph for a while back, and I think I I think we could do a good song. Together. People sleep <laughs> on him. Murph is a uh, Murph. I said. If if Simple Man ain't the most technical rapper in the genre, Murph is. Yeah, he's, he's good. Murph's good. He does some different things, he's, bro. He's good. He, he well, yeah, you're right. He'll change from this. Yeah, to this. And I, I videoed. I just shot a video of him one time uh, a couple years ago, and he was singing. He was just singing. Yeah, like a country song. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, he's he's very I guess versatile. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good dude, man. Um, and I got I got a discount on the feature that time, but man, he's a he's a good dude. He's a good dude. I think. I think we should I was thinking about mine and his song and I was thinking we could do something like that but like uh, yeah guys so the vision 15,000 15,000 people have, stadiums yeah, I'm talking about stadiums and I I've done, <laughs> which is crazy to say and I've told her I don't know if it'll be me headlining them or not but I see I just that's what the Lord showed me so and you never know like we was talking about earlier it could be a month from now you might I mean you know do you know who Justin Champagne is? I know the name, yeah. Okay. This is a real cool story. I mean, this is this is your interview, but real quick story. I, I, and this is, shows you how things work. I I met the guy, and I was filming a show, uh, a show in Ohio probably a couple years ago. And he was there. And so I didn't know at the time. I guess he'd been talking to somebody about a deal or whatever. I, I'm not a big fan of signing record deals. But, I mean, to each his own, whatever. And so, like... We hung out, just real nice guy. There's probably only 200 people at the show, and uh, real nice guy. And I was gonna film him, film his set. He had me on Facebook. We talked here and there. Four months goes by, and he was opening show, shows for Snoop Dogg. He has a song with Snoop Dogg now, a song. That's crazy. And dude's just—he was just a country rapper started out. Now he's been doing it for a while, but he didn't get nowhere until the past like, yeah, in my opinion, until the past like four years, three or four years. You know, he, and then he got a, he got a bunch of views on Spotify. Um, or a bunch of you know listens plays whatever and then he got a bunch of he got he had one song do really good um, on YouTube and like stuff like that can kick off bro if you yeah. get a song with um, Adam Calhoun now if you get a song with uh, Trailer Mate if you get a song with uh, um, Hard Target or something who, who knows or even just a solo song yeah and it just hits that algorithm bro yeah I mean, you saw what happened to the Oliver Anthony kid. Yeah. Her guy. Well, in my, I'll say this. That's the song of our generation. That I agree. Is, that is the most important song I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> and wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. And I tell it to her, and she can't relate. I don't know why she can't. <laughs> man, well, I appreciate you doing the interview. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. But that's uh, definitely the most important. All of that Richmond North of Richmond's the most important song I've ever heard. I didn't know if you was a fan of it. Yeah, that's the most important song I've ever heard, bro. This this interview probably won't be out until I'm already. It's already happened, so I'm going to go ahead and say say it on here. I got tickets to an Oliver Anthony show. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, the twenty the twenty eighth. That's cool. So this coming, yeah, and it was one of the ones that he had to cancel, but then he put tickets back online, and I saw right after I followed the guy online. I saw the I saw it right after he posted it. And it was like 30 minutes after he posted, hey, these are the new tickets. It was sold out in an hour and a half. Wow. And I somehow I just saw it, dude. I bought two tickets, $25 That's piece. That's awesome, man. And I talked to his, I'm, I didn't think the dude would answer. I messaged his little guitar player, that dude who plays yeah, yeah, the, I've seen the, the league mm -hmm. player, and he messaged me back. And I said, is it, is it meet and greet? He said, yeah, he said, this one's meet and greet. That'd be cool, man. Bro, so it's like. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, that's pretty because crazy. That it, it is, because that, like I said, that's the single most important yeah. song I've ever heard. I, whatever other word you want to use, see, it's important. Yeah. It's a super important yeah. song. So, yeah, that's it, awesome. It, it is very important. Yeah. I, I agree with you. I didn't want to I didn't want to necessarily go there with, yeah. with, uh, with something. I didn't know if you liked it or not. But, dude, it's like, that, that's what we were talking about earlier, though, substance. Yeah. It is substance. There is millions of people who felt working all day, overtime hours mm -hmm. for BS pay. Yeah, and then they're hooked from there. Yeah. And then when he got them to that, yeah. 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 And I mean, and, and that's what I'm saying. You keep putting out stuff you put out. Who knows? You could be, you could you could go take off. The cool thing is, bro, I was talking to Kentucky Headhunters, and 
um, the lead singer of Kentucky Headhunters, they had to jump through so many hoops because of Nashville record labels back in the day, and they didn't want anything to do with them, and they were like, no, you can't do that, da, 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 da. and they were just like, screw it, we're going to do it our own way after a while, but then the people took their music and they took off with it, they were buying 500,000 albums, they were making them rich, the people did that, the label didn't even really yeah. want to push stuff their way, that's what's cool about now, you can put a song out tomorrow, and in a week, you yeah. could be in a stadium, yep. you know, you just it's, never know. It's undoubtedly the easiest time to ever make it music. That's true. Uh, now, unlikely, you know, guys don't think you're just going to get rich. I followed Southwind's advice. <laughs> they don't work like that. I mean, most of the time, no. But it's possible. The opportunity is there. Man, we're, we are... 50-something minutes in, bro. We're almost good. You want to you answer one more question? Yeah, I'll take one more. I got one more question, bro. Perfect. Any advice for someone looking to break the chains of addiction or just advice in life, period, the chains of addiction, or any advice for I'd someone say, as an artist trying to make it? I'd say to me for the first half of that, the most important thing is to find something to believe in. Mm. Whatever it is, um, you got to have something to believe in. You know, in the military, they teach people you need three things to survive war. Food, water, and something to believe in. Oh, wow. And um, That's cool. So I would say, uh, undoubtedly, you got to find something bigger than you, whether it be, and I, I am obviously firm in my faith, but God, whatever that means to you, or some something bigger than yourself. And as far as anybody trying to make it music, dude, just do it. Just, just do it. What did we talk about? The four, you know, hard work, um, hard work, and and having a goal, having a vision. Yeah, and just do it, and just get after it. Don't don't waste any time. You know what I'm saying? Put so. the footwork out. Do it. Don't be scared. All right, bro. It's been awesome. This this actually has turned out to be one of my favorite interviews, bro. It's there's a lot of honesty in it. A lot of things people can can uh, yeah. relate to, and they can Thank take you. with them. Peace. <laughs> Y'all go check out Cody Lane, man.